Hello, welcome to my channel, Lorenzo here. Okay, I'm gonna paint a portrait. Uh, okay, just one second. Got the photograph here. Okay, here, the, here are the brushes I'm going to use. I got fiber brushes and I have round brushes. Okay, all of them are synthetic brushes. Uh, here are the colors: tinted white, cadmium yellow, orange. Uh, this is vermilion, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and black. I'm gonna start sketching with white charcoal. Let's see, first uh, I'm gonna see the overall shape and it looks like I can just fit the whole head inside a, a square, something like that. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just trying to simplify, okay, I'm squinting down my eyes, uh, something that I see here for example is this, this triangular shape. Okay, all this in shadow. All this dark because of the hair and this area of the face on light. Let's see. Okay. Maybe I should move it a little bit to the right. I got this space for mixing my colors. Yeah, I think it's okay. Now the next thing I do is always I always check out the photograph and I see if I can use just the regular proportions which are from the eyebrows to the same distance from the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose and from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. Okay, I think it's I think it's pretty good. For the eyes I split this in three portions. And usually I sit the eyes. In this case, the eyes uh, are closed. Her eyes are closed. That means that we could be maybe pretty, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a coincidence here for the for the position of the eyes. For the mouth, I split this portion in two. And usually, that's going to be the bottom of the bottom lip. Okay. I mean, not always. We gotta check out the photograph, we can measure if we want. Okay. Let's see the overall shape. To draw the overall shapes, I pay attention to two things. Obviously first, trying to draw this, and at the same time paying attention to this area, which is called a negative space. Okay. No one drawing this and I'm paying attention to the negative space, okay? Like this portion for example. Okay. No, let's see. Yeah, I think that's okay. No, I'm gonna shade a little bit. Uh, here, for example, the shadow. Okay, a little bit of a shadow here, a little bit darker here. No. I'm comparing, remember that I always have the photograph next to my painting, to my left, same size. Especially when I paint portrait, portraits, I have, you know, I try to to have the photograph pretty close and the more important, same size as my painting. When I paint a landscape, still life, you know, something different. Sometimes I got the image a little bit smaller, but for a portrait, portrait is going to be always more difficult. Okay. There. 
I'm gonna use a thin brush and I'm gonna soften my drawing a little bit. Okay. Okay, I think it's okay. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Mm. Mm, my comparing basically what I do is just move my eyes really fast. You know, I put my head kind of between my drawing and the photograph here. In that way, I move my eyes, just my eyes. I don't move the head to the left of just my eyes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I, I just, uh, I just, uh, just, I just use water. Nothing more. And I have a bottle here with water to you know spray bottle. I keep spraying water here to my colors. Okay. It's just this one, this is a number twelve fiber brush. Okay. I wet the brush and I have paper towel here. I can do this. Okay, I'm gonna just mix just one simple color, just orange and white. I want something, I want something simple, just a flat, solid color as a base. The good thing about acrylics, you know, that they dry really fast, and uh, because of that, I'm also worried about matching the color on my first, you know, with my first mixtures or the first brush strokes. I'm just gonna let it dry and repaint everything again. With the brush, just a spray water on the brush, and I put it here on my table. Now I'm gonna paint. Uh, oh, I painted the lights. Sorry, I painted just the lights. I'm gonna paint here, the background, blue and white. I think this color is pretty good. I mean, on the photograph I see a light blue. If I make it a little bit darker, I'm gonna create more contrast. Let's see. Need more paint. More water. I don't use too much paint. Okay, I don't want to have like a, you know, some texture or feel the, you know, when I, 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 I go over 
the surface with my finger if I fear the you know the limit here a little bit of paint there that's not good you know uh, that's why I don't use too much paint at the very beginning when I'm gonna, uh, when I'm sure about the drawing that my drawing is okay then I'm gonna start using more paint okay I do the same with my brush, I wet my brush, just spray water on my brush, put it on my table. Let me pick up a new one. Okay, I wet this new brush, I do this, and let's let's mix a color for the shadows. For one shadow, just for the shadow of me, I'm gonna start painting just light and shadow on the face. orange, white, a touch of blue. Orange, white, a touch of blue. Okay, I think that the shadow is darker than this color, but right now it's gonna be okay. Okay, what I'm gonna have is this brush and this one for blending. Yeah. For example, if I lay down a brush stroke like this, where I have this, you know, sharp edge, I use this brush and I soften the edge. Okay, the same here. It's gonna be so difficult to, you know, uh, soften uh, a sharp edge since the acrylic paint dries really fast. brush here and I gotta be sure to soften the edges of ultramarine blue a little bit of water and I continue painting here now you see this color is lighter than this I'm gonna just mix again add a little bit of more blue more blue and orange yeah that's gonna be enough Got this brush and I soften the edge. Soften the edges. Okay. Now 
I dip just the tip of the brush on water and put it on my table. Okay. Hello Sharon. Hello life is fun. Hello Omar. Hello Sergio. Okay. Okay, now let's paint the hair. I can see the skin color if I compare, obviously mine is more pinky. That does is perfectly okay. I'm not so worried about that. Remember when we paint with acrylics the painting dries really fast. We go over and repaint again. Look at that. Now the hair, I'm going to add more blue, more blue, a little bit of orange, and I have brown, okay, I don't want that, I don't want this sharp edge. Okay. Yeah. Soften in the edges. Yep, that's pretty good. Now I continue here. Comparing, yeah, I think everything look, looks okay. Okay. No, I'm gonna pick up a round brush. Oh no, maybe this one. This one is gonna be okay. Okay, I'm gonna use this one as a pencil. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of paint and I'm gonna try to add a little bit of details but not for trying to kind of finish up or, or working on specific on details it's more about kind of drawing again yeah. another thing that uh, is pretty good to use is a mirror okay Mm, comparing, comparing, yeah, that's okay. I think I can use this color, yeah, a little bit of water. I don't want too much paint. Okay, I got this brush and I got this one. I wet this one. I do this, and this one is gonna be for uh, softening if I have a sharp edge. I'm gonna use this one to soften that sharp edge. Okay. Let's see. Here is the eyebrow. Eyebrow. Okay. Just one second. Soften a little bit this brush stroke. The eye is here, the other eye is here. Okay, now the nose. Check, let, let me check out with my photograph. Let's 
soften a little bit. Okay, don't let any sharp edge. It's going to be so difficult to get rid of those sharp edges when the painting dries. Color is okay, I mean, there's no problem with colors at all. We can just start painting a red face, a blue face, and just by adding more and more paint, you're gonna end up with skin color, because that's the good thing about acrylics. They dry faster, and you can just change the color. Let's, let's say it in an easier way than, than a different medium, like oil paint, for example. Okay. Let's see, I could bring my drawing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the best option, no, always is a wet palette. Obviously, for me, it's difficult to use a wet palette since I. I'm doing this to show you the mixtures. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. That was the first layer. You know, I painted light on the face, shadow, the background, the hair. Now I'm gonna start with a second layer. Okay. I'm going to mix a color for the light. Now, my goal is not to mix a color for the light is here, the highlight is here, okay, no. That's gonna be later. It's kind of, I don't think about those lightest lights, and I try to think more about it as a mid-tone. Uh, it's kind of difficult that, because imagine that you, you have layers. In one layer, you have the highlights. You take out that layer. You're not gonna copy that one. Okay, got orange, white, and keeping this pretty simple, orange and white, which is pretty easy to remember. Okay, now you knock down this color with blue. The more blue you add, the grayish is this color. Look at that. No. Look at that. I don't like it. No, I think it uh, has to be lighter. Okay. Don't let it dry like that. Brush strokes, you can just soften and you can just add more water and kind of clean it. Erase that. And add more white. Let's see, my color is maybe too mute, too bright, too pinky. Okay, let's add a touch of yellow, a tiny touch of yellow. Now let's paint here. Painting the forehead. I don't want the forehead right now to be as bright as in the photograph. Okay. Now here. Now here. Remember, always have. With you a, a clean brush, and you do this. Clean the brush and repeat.
here, right here. After this, I'm going to mix a layer of color, and I just, then I'm going to get closer to the color, the photograph, color and value. No, 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 it's not like uh, I got to do it really fast, I'm just going to let the painting dry, and I'll be back here with a different value. Okay, a lighter color, lighter, lighter value. I did this just to show you that uh, matching the color is uh, uh, sometimes is it's about mixing a lot. Sometimes you know trying to match. Sometimes it's about just adding more and more layers. Hello Sharon, hello Liz Williams, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna paint the shadows again, a little more orange. Good, that's good. Oops. Okay. Okay, uh, what I don't want is this sharp edge, like I mentioned before. I don't want that, okay? As soon as you see something like that, just pick up a wet brush and just, just soften. I stay just there. It's kind of half of the brush is for the light and half is for you know, the darker color. Just by moving like that, I soften the edge.
Mm -hmm. I think it's too dark. Anyway, you know that uh, I want add more paint. I can repaint. I can just do it right now and, and don't wait more. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of white. Make this lighter. Water. What if I do this, okay? Yeah, just soften. Okay. And then you got a lighter color there. Then you can repeat and repeat as many times you want. Okay, the shadow on the nose. Not like I'm trying to get a really soft, soft, you know, surface, but definitely I don't want sharp edges. But if I zoom in, you know, you're gonna see some brush strokes. Kind of molding my brush just by pressuring. Yeah. Okay, I think that's good. Painted the light and the shadows again. Now I go with the background. My blue is different, but you know what? I, I love that this blue I have here. Yeah. I can make it a little bit darker just to create more contrast. Uh, two things you want color contrast or you want, I mean, value contrast. Could be both, too, I mean, but. Uh, here in the photograph, uh, you see that's more about color contrast because the value that this, the, the, you know, the background and the value of the light and the face kind of pretty close, the same. Yeah. When we speak about color contrast, that means that you saturate the color a little bit more. In this case, make it more bluish. Uh, or value contrast, that is, it means making that color darker. Okay. Mm, yeah. I, I like uh, to see more contrast. At the same at the same time I love the photograph. Okay. Mm. Uh, that's a thing that uh, I mean it's not like one way is gonna be better than the other. It's not like uh, like because I make the background darker, it's gonna look better than just making the background lighter. It just uh, what you like at the moment, you know. Right now, I love the photograph. Yeah, I love the background, all of that. But I think, uh, following what I used to do my paintings, you know, is uh, just adding more contrast. I think I'm gonna just make this darker. Blue, little bit of black, white. I need uh, more white and I need cerulean blue.
Hello, Sunny Brown. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see the background. We'll add a little bit of cerulean blue. Yeah, another thing that I can change is I could make it darker up, lighter here, you know, darker, of darker here and lighter up here. We have so many options. Or we can just leave some more visible brush strokes. No. Just like let it dry the painting like that on purpose. Okay. Again, about edges. I don't want uh, sharp edges. This is gonna be difficult because you know it's always difficult work work in smaller areas. I barely, you know, move in just the tip of the brush, as you can see. You don't see me doing this. It's not that kind of pressure. It's just like that. Tip of the brush. Okay. Now I change a little bit the background and I add different brush strokes. I just can leave those brush strokes there. Just in case somebody wants to change something. Yeah. It's pretty good, you know, trying to copy the photograph. But I think it's always better if we add something more. At the same time, it's up to anyone how much color you add. Or let, let's just make this a little bit darker. If I just make this darker, you know, it's going to get closer to the value that is here on the hair. And what's going to happen, there's going to be contrast around the hair, the head and the contrast is going to be concentrated just here yeah. we can we can do just you know add more light here and we have contrast here and we see the whole head again it's not that one option is going to be better than the other it's not about that it's just what you like you can just paint the, just the same uh, image again and try a different options and you're gonna see that both both are gonna be beautiful okay now are we checking out edges yeah. here's not that important yeah. because we are gonna add hair some you know thin hairs just on the edge and even if I add a little bit of the background here that's okay it's not like it's that color is gonna stay if that stay a little bit of that color there that's okay mm -hmm. what else what else I'm missing something am I missing something here or here 
só fazer um bilhete. Obviously, that's a little bit different, the background from the photograph, different in color, in saturation, and in texture. It's not like it has a lot of paint, but the brush strokes add something, you know. And when we do something like, like this, that adds some movement. We can even add more, you know, by just maybe adding some curvy brush strokes. That's up to anyone, all the things that we can do on the painting okay okay I'm just uh, now I'm checking my drawing again mm -hmm. I'm comparing a lot okay, I'm gonna spray some water on my colors Spray some water on my brushes. I'm gonna dip some of the brushes in water. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just thinking. Uh, right now I'm comparing. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think right now maybe I should knock down this blue. Oops. Okay, anyway. Let's see. Okay, okay. Let's think about the face. Okay, one thing that uh, I'm going to do now, uh, I got this value, which I think, in terms of value, not color, okay, value, which I think is closer to the shadow, here, it's not the close, okay, uh, it's, it's uh, like, I don't have a darker, darker value here, I need a darker value to be able to, to see, you know, the, the, all the values from, let's say, a lighter one to a darker one. I'm gonna paint the hair. I'm gonna try to make it darker now. I'm cleaning some brushes, just one second, okay. Yeah, yes, use black. And this vermilion, vermilion red. And black. A little bit of water. Let's see. It looks like that value is pretty close to the hair. Yeah. Okay. I change remember that a brush a brush stroke is no, it's not the same always you control like imagine that the brush strokes uh, the brush is a pencil you control the pressure okay stepping back a little bit and leaning back and you know paint sit on a chair cannot step back that much okay I think that's good I have a thin brush I'm soften some edges here Boy, I have a tiny brush a tiny thin brush just one second, I don't know where it is, I need to find it. Just 
brushes are pretty good. Okay, got uh, the hair. I think the volume is good. Softening this, a eh? you know, the edges. Okay, I'm comparing, you know, I'm just move my eyes between my the photograph, my painting, and the photograph. Mm. Okay, okay. Gracias, Sergio. Okay. Oh, Wanda. Oh, thank you, Wanda. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just work on, on on the eyes, nose, and mouth. Uh, what I mean is, I want I want to work on details a little bit okay let's see you use the same color that I use for the hair Oh, I need to zoom in the photograph now. Always, I work with two brushes, one brush to lay down the paint, the other brush to soften the edges, okay? <laughs> nope, the color's not working there.
see the nostril, the mouth. I'm checking the light mini with the photograph. Somebody has any questions, just let me know. I paint basically with oil paints and acrylics. I gotta say that I paint more with. Uh, no, I mean, let's say that I use both. And I try to keep like uh, both in a traditional way. I mean, when I paint with oil paints, I just use linseed oil. Okay, when I paint with acrylics, I just use water. Okay. What I mean is, uh, uh, I just let the material do what you know what it does best in, in the case of acrylics it dries faster and that's good for me like the case of oil paints slowly yep that's good for me <laughs> I need more shadow here. Shadow there and soften the brush stroke. Okay. Now you can start adding more and more paint. Sometimes I end up basically repainting an area completely, okay? And that's okay, that's what it takes just to paint. It does, it's just like painting, it, it takes a little back and forth, a little retouch it, retouches. Don't think that because you know you're not able to get it that maybe the first brush strokes. No, okay. Painting is about just adding more paint and adjusting the colors, values, and repeat again and repeat again. Okay, it's just normal. Evelyn is saying great tip on the two brushes: I lay paint and second to soften edges. Okay. Eh? I'm guessing this because you're using acrylic. Yes, yes, that's when I paint with acrylics. I do, I do that all the time. Yeah. Hello, Bobby Sucks. Sonny Brown, say, Sonny Brown is saying, I'm a beginner on acrylics and oil. I've been watching your videos. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Nicholas saying, How do you decide what edges are softer than others? Yeah, the, at the very beginning, it's just like. Uh, all the edges, I try just to keep softer edges everywhere. Okay, not lost edges, but softer edges. Uh, and but as I continue painting more and more, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna have for sure some sharp edges. For example, the nose. 
it's gonna be a sharp edge because I want the nose to come forward a little bit more okay the hair obviously is gonna be a soft and maybe a lost edge in some area okay. it's gonna I'm gonna have a difference between the edge here on the lower portion of the chin and the edge here on the neck definitely this edge has to be softer than this one but right now it's too early to uh, to think about that I, I uh, you know right now is for me it's just drawing and try to get closer slowly yeah. and counting that acrylic dry faster and it's just like I add a new layer again to the whole portrait and the next layer is gonna get closer to what I want in the case I want to copy the photograph or in a case if I want to add more saturation or anything you know I mean this, the intention that we always have is copy the photograph yeah, because on the photograph we have all the all the, the values that we need to create three-dimensionality okay okay now For this color, add more white, a touch of camion red. No, it's too pinky, a touch of yellow. I don't see, I don't feel like a, it's she, oh well, like uh, her face is getting a warm, warm light. Anyway, at the same time, I don't see that she's uh, pinky. Her skin is pinky as it is on my painting. Okay. At the same time, I gotta say that that's not the only way to, to paint with acrylics. You know, it depends on the style you want. Okay. I need a softer brush. Oh, blending. Okay, anyway. Let's see the color of the of the forehead. Eh, I think it's okay. lay down a brush stroke and nice soft I got too much water on this brush I'll do this
so now I can just repaint the light, repaint the shadow, everything again and again. Oh, one guy is asking me how often do you go live? At least once a week. Now sometimes Thursdays or Fridays. The thing is that I go live, uh, you know, I don't know if I make a mistake, but I decided to uh, separate the things that I do in different channels. And I have a channel that I just paint with oil paints. I have this channel, which is new, just for acrylics. And I got a different channel for drawing. I uh, got some live streams there, you know, that are drawn with ink, with charcoal, graphite. I don't know if I did uh, right or wrong, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's what I have and. That's why sometimes you're gonna see me live. I'm mean, speaking about people that are watching me on Facebook, but because on Facebook I just have one page, and every time that I go live on YouTube, uh, you just see me on on my fan on my fan page on Facebook. You know, it's called Renzo Art. Uh, doesn't matter how where I go live on YouTube, on Facebook that's gonna be on the same page the same fan page
<laughs> I'm squinting down my eyes. And then back. Mm, I got something wrong here on the shape of the forehead. Yeah, that's not okay. You know, I always, uh, when, I, when I compare my drawing, I try to simplify always everything. You know, I, I was checking the forehead as a flat shape. Okay, you can just do that if you just uh, kind of just just one line here, another one, another one, and another one. That simplifies that. I did that. I compare with the photograph. It's not the same shape. Oh, obviously, it's closer. It's not like it's you know it's completely a different shape. But anyway, I mean it's not the same. too much water here. <laughs> now I'm gonna paint a little bit of the hair. Just wait one second. I need to look for my film brushes. Got a couple of them. That's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, you know, I save them like, and I keep these ones because they are pretty good, just for acrylics. And I don't know where I put them. <laughs> Anyway, okay. Anyway, I mean, I'm gonna. Um, I just want to, um, my bigger brush is not gonna work. I mean, the brushes that I'm speaking about is just this kind of the same, the, this size, pretty tiny ones. Okay. Let me see. Uh, between these two, this is the smaller one, this bigger one. We're gonna use this one. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me just just this color. A little bit of water. Not too much paint. more transparent if you're doing this and you see that the color is not okay don't worry you know be happy don't worry because uh, just let the painting dry it's gonna be so easy just to change it you can just use a glaze and change the color okay what I'm trying to get is just the light and I know that you know the color is not it's not it's not a match and even I'm gonna add, add in more water even if I do this here it's okay you just always 
repaint everything and even no repaint just with a glaze we can just fix that just with a glaze that means that we don't need to go over the process of mixing again like meticulous, meticulously mixing to get the color Sunny Brown is asking when preparing canvas with two coats do you mix acrylic with gesso or just acrylic alone yeah, no uh, I usually I add three or four layers of gesso 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 you know. and after that uh, I, I add this transparent layer of acrylic it could be gray it could be orangey it could be brown okay uh, is when I'm trying to uh, get a transparent layer any color you say you know it's around usually I use gray or this is kind of burnt sienna I prepare this color uh, mixing orange and blue orange and cerulean blue and I got this uh, the, the base when I mixed uh, I got gray I just black and white yeah, black and white sometimes I add the touch of orange okay uh, let's continue okay now I got lights and shadows on my painting definitely it's not enough okay I need to adjust again and again all the colors okay I can see light and shadows I see some details on but let's say details on the head lights yep you know, I think the position of the eyes nose and mouth is okay which is pretty good okay okay let's continue the good thing that every time every layer is kind of a new beginning because everything is dry we can even start just uh, scumbling okay or glazing I'm gonna show you I mean uh, it's just, just like we can do whatever we want yeah, but glazing is usually for the end but sometimes I, gla I glaze in the middle of the process I glaze because I want to darken up something or I want to change a color Okay. Anyone is free to do a different way. For example, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and white. Uh cerulean blue, sorry, cerulean blue and white. Okay, it's not pure light blue, it's getting mixed with the color here. And uh, this is gonna be a glaze. Okay see a transparent layer it changing the color eh? yeah it changing the color a little dry because it's too transparent it's not gonna be like oh my god the, the color already changed a lot but since the acrylic dries faster I can just repeat that even when it's still wet I can just repeat that Okay, and changing the color what if I add a little bit of green now for this what we need is a little bit of experience about mixing colors but not mixing colors here on the palette it's more about mixing colors in layers in transparent layers that means using glazes okay if you imagine that you see this through a green filter transparent filter that's gonna be something like a glaze you think hey you know kind of imagine how are the colors that's a, a glaze okay I got this it's kind of greenish what happened if I add this transparent color on top of the skin let's see it has to be pretty transparent okay I'm 
some blending. You know, using these glazes, you can just finish up a painting. One layer after one layer, again and again, again and again. Yeah, I'm planning to do that, you know, when, of paint, when painting, just uh, working with just scumbling or just with glazes. A softening edges. Okay. You see the color? You think the color is closer to the photograph? I think it's a little bit closer. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, that's an option. What if I add this here on the face? Wow, I think that was too much. Anyway, since I know I just can change it again and again, it's not a problem. At the same time, it's not like when I stay here like six hours just changing the colors again and again. But usually every step we take, it gets us, you know, put it closer to the color we want. Okay. What do you think? Do you think the color is closer to the photograph? Now, if somebody has the same conditions, like the skin color is kind of pinky, now you know when you add a transparent green layer, then you're gonna have like uh, closer, you know, to to the skin color. It just it's just about getting the same conditions. Anyway. There is a change on the whole painting. I can just use pink, add a glaze of pink and change the color again. Up 21. Okay. Okay, so more brushes and we continue working on with my palette. Okay. Let's see the forehead. Uh, the 
more light on the forehead, more light here and here. I'm going to move down to a nose. Okay, this value doesn't go all the way down with the same intensity, usually on the globella, the globella area here. The value changes a little bit darker here. Usually there's there is a highlight on the nose. And on the nasal bone. There. Okay.
I'm squinting down my eyes, you know, as much as possible. I'm trying to see, for example, this light uh, is brighter than the light here. Okay, I'm trying to keep that difference. Now, uh, that's the, the the difficult thing because sometimes we add the light here. I, you know, I paint this light, and with the same brush, I go. And I paint here. You know when that happens, and that's pretty common. I mean, for everybody. Okay, we gotta just kind of go back and knock down one of the lights. And basically, uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what I do when I go back and forth, trying to keep the difference between the values. Like for example, I add, I got this light eh, here, eh? and then I add the same light here. The light. Here is not as bright as the light here, okay? If I got the same light, I gotta mix a different color and go over that area again. Yeah, uh, the same, I, I gotta kind of work always in the, looking for the relationship between all the lights. Always thinking like, oh, the lights are not the same all over the face, you know, which area has the lightest lights in which area just about you know mute let's say mute lights you can just repaint that or what I'm doing basically I'm working like uh, let's say these are glazes I mean it's not like glazes glazes but definitely the painting is kind of transparent I don't have a lot of paint, it's not really thick. Okay, now the nose again. Now when, when my drawing is ready, that means uh, I'm not worried uh, about the position of the eyes the mouth, the nose, I think everything is okay. Everything after that is gonna be about values. Okay. Darken up some values, lighten up some values, go over again some, uh, on some the same areas again and again. Like here, I painted here and now I'm going back here to repaint again. Okay, one thing that I'm gonna be sure here on the forehead, uh, the light is here. Okay? okay, I cannot paint the same light all the way to the to the edge of the forehead. Yeah. I I see that the light is pretty bright here. Yeah. Okay? And maybe it is, but what I'm choosing to do is not painting that uh, light there because I wanna make I wanna create the illusion that this is turning. And I'm not trusting my eyes on that. I'm just following a simple rule about, uh, you know, some spherical form. If the light is here, the value that goes to the edge is different. I cannot have the same light here because that's gonna make the forehead flat. It's the same reason that, for example, here I, I, got, I keep this brighter, but I don't keep this area as bright as that. Okay. And that's what we call, you know, values. People keep saying value is skin and painting. You know, value this, value that. All the, uh, you know, values, tones, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is, you know. And by, by 
doing this, going back and forth, uh, that's the way we got, you know, the three-dimensional effect on, on anything, on any object. It's not just about portrait. And obviously, repetition, repetition, repetition. Through practice. Okay, now I got my, the light on the chain as bright. It looks brighter, it looks almost close as this light over this. Okay, I gotta knock down the light, okay? It shouldn't be that bright. Hmm. I'm gonna repaint that or I'm gonna add a glaze. Let's see. Let's see that later. I'm gonna paint a little bit of the hair. work on the eye mixing orange and Cerulean blue. Okay. Little bit of ultramarine blue and orange. Little bit of black too, just to make it darker brown black and coming red. Add more water. Okay, let's step back, check out, okay, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna use this brown here, a little bit of water, and this is gonna be a glaze. I change the color and knock down. I don't get rid of those brush strokes. If I want to get rid of those brush strokes, I'm going to obviously add a thicker layer. But the spring one is going to change the color. It's going to keep those, you know, those brush strokes. I'm, gonna, I'm keeping them because uh, I don't know if I'm going to use them. At least some of, at least some of them. Oh, 
Oh, hello, Joanne. Joanne. Thank you. From here, it's about just you know, repeat the same, checking out, looking all over the painting, looking for values, what this should be darker, what should be lighter, and with that, working on, on uh, now you can start start working on the tears, like uh, for example the lip, you know, uh, there is some wrinkles there. Yep or uh, on the eyes the the eyelashes you know yeah it's up to anyone how much details is i mean but remember the more important or not the details you know okay values values always but you start working we start working everything at the same time you know i'm gonna start making this dark because i think it's darker Okay. And at the same time, adding the terrace on the eyebrows. Okay. Another thing that we can start doing is working with a, a dry brush or a scumbling. That would be just pick up paint to this and what what is left on the brush you paint The only thing about a scumbling is that we're going to see the texture, the tooth, the canvas, when we scumble. A reflected light here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I see a reflected light. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, I need to add more more orange here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna let it dry, and that's gonna be better. You so uh, if I just add the reflected light with uh, a dry brush. Yeah. It's more difficult to control with, I don't know, the glazes. Step back. Mm -hmm. Adding a little bit of color on the face. It's not a good idea, but you know. Sunny Brown is asking me, can you use same glazes for both acrylics and oils? Yes. But different. The difference with oils is that you gotta let the painting, you know, dry. The paint dry to the touch. Acrylics is different. Uh, Frank, a dart, a dart. See, have you ever done a portrait with super saturated colors? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe not a lot, like, but I have painted few, few with uh, some saturated colors, and in comparison with with what I used to paint, but not like a full, full. Saturate the colors. I wanna add a little bit of a reflected light here. Let's see if this orange is gonna work. Get the color I can even saturate all the shadows you know here that's the, uh, this is a personal option it's more it's not what I see on the on the photograph it's just what you know I would love to see on my painting Yeah, 
this is a dry brush for example you notice that I pick up pick up a little bit of orange I spread it here that makes the painting dry faster and then I apply it with no water okay. see now what I have is a little bit of more I'm, I'm adding now vermilion okay what I have are just more saturated shadows like I mentioned before this is up 21 remember that you know people uh, all the painters just just to say we paint what we see we paint what we know and we paint what we want to see in this case uh, right now I'm just doing something that I would love to see on my painting it's not about copying the photograph anymore just like you know for example like uh, painting the background darker yeah that would be an option for me to see this glow even more because of the because of the contrast I could choose to I could choose to do anything I want the end uh, uh, I mean it depends you know sometimes I keep saying that you know sometimes I, I, I just want to copy the photograph exactly exactly I don't want to change anything and sometimes I want to make changes this is dry brush and adding some pressure look at my brush how you move Okay, look at the pressure. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, at the end, if I don't like it, I can add a glaze and get rid of that in things, you know, uh, reflect the light. If I add a glaze, I mean adding water, the effect is different. Look at that. Okay. What do you all think? Do you think I should keep it like that? I should just you no know, stay just copying the photograph. What? Would you love to see, would you all love to see a darker background? Just, just, to, just, you know, just to see what happens. Oh, Frank is saying a sort of abstract type portrait, portraiture or something like that. No, I haven't. Yeah. It's just like, uh, things like this, just adding more and more and more, Ooh. I forget to soften this. Just adding more and more um, saturation, but just like like, like this. Yeah. No, no, not like uh, going crazy. Maybe the background adding more, more uh, uh, saturation to a background or adding more uh, from the green, greenish area on the skin. No, not, no, no, not like a lot of color. I would try, I would love. Hey, we love to, 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 to know what do you all think. You all think they should knock down this blue and make it darker? Yeah, a bit dark. See what happens. No, no, you know what? I'm gonna do it, okay? Let's see what happens. Uh, and I just black a little bit of ultramarine blue. It's a glaze first. It's too transparent. More blue.
this mother brush to get closer to the face. Okay, I like it. Let's go with dark, dark. We need more ultramarine blue and black. And I want a more solid background. Like that looks like an unfinished background. This is pure black. Now, here I have a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just ages, remember about the ages. Well, a smaller brush for that. I'm trying to soften in an edge here.
Now I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, you know, we uh, we need to try always. Now remember always that uh, a change like that, uh, there's going to be some people that are going to like it and some people that won't. It's just as normal. Now I'm going to need to add some lights on the eyelashes. And that way we can see those eyelashes. Adding a little bit of gray the hair. of light on the hair. On the air, just on the air, almost not touching. Okay, you know, I would love to knock down the, the skin color a little bit. Uh, what do you all think? I would love to, to read some comments and opinions. Okay, remember that we can just always, we can always glaze. If you decide to do something like that, a change, and you don't like it, I could say I could tell you, hey, you know, let the painting rest and see, check out the painting the next day. You know, it's it, it, it's not like 
the painting is is worse. You ruin the painting. It's nothing like that, you know. It's like I said before. Maybe next day you're gonna love it and say, "Wow, it's pretty good." Maybe not. Okay. Now, uh, uh, remember that we can just change the color again and again at glazes. At you know, uh, a dry brush or scumbo. Okay, we can keep doing that a lot. Okay, and checking the painting alone, just to see if I like it for me. Okay. Like it for me, not not like not like comparing with the photograph. I like the painting. Yeah, you know. Now I think that I should knock down the those orangey colors. I think that was better before, but not now. Okay, let's see what we can do to knock down those colors. What if we, we try something just simple, like uh, if just try the complementary color? If you have something too orangey. What you use? Blue. The opposite color. Okay. Let's see this one. No. I'm gonna add a real transparent layer. What happen if we knock down the color? It's just simple as that. Okay. Now we're gonna try again and again because a glaze is a pretty transparent layer, okay? No, nothing is gonna happen at the first try. Definitely, there's no orange anymore there. Just be sure that the value is, is closer to the value in that area. see a little bit of this orange maybe I should keep it there yeah
<clears throat> Needs a little bit of green. It's too bright. Add a lot of water here. Pretty transparent. What happens if I put it here? I knock down the color on the forehead. I mean, this is so transparent that the change is going to be pretty subtle. That's something that I could do with oil paints, glazes like this. But for that, I should wait. You know, like a, a week at least, or maybe more. Okay, you let it dry, and you know you can you can you can just continue retouching and retouching again and again. be able to continue retouching and retouching Maybe just five more minutes that's it I gotta go to pick up my son
Okay, I think that's what I wanted. Yeah. Just working back and forth here because I want to get like the mid tone, okay, and a little bit of the reflected light here. But I don't want the reflected light to be as orangey as it was before, okay. Okay, I'm not gonna have too much time to work here. I think with that is enough. Uh, I like a little bit of this orangey that still is, is still here. You know, that some transparency to the nose. Yeah. And add a little bit here. Okay, I like it now with that contrast. I liked it before when the background was light. It's two options. At the end, you know, it was a nice exercise. It was a nice, uh, a, a nice, you know, like session. Okay, hello, Debra. Uh, Wanda Flanagan, which page do you draw? Okay, I'm gonna put the link here on Facebook. Just one second, one second. Okay, I think that's yeah. That's it for today. Yeah. Some, some highlights, last touches. Should work a little bit on the on the on the, on the mouth. This is just dry brush, okay? You see, as soon as you spread the paint. On the palette, you can as soon as you do that, just one second, you can still feel it that it's already drying. It's pretty sticky. See a reflected light here, this portion. A little bit of that. Yeah, that reflected light here. Yeah, I've been missing some reflected light. Just there.
Okay. Uh, what is? Let me see something. Mm. Okay, I gotta go to pick up my son. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. See you see you all next week. Take care. Bye.